Uh, right, so um, got five bottles now, all got C5 H1002 on. Could be uh, any of those five there. They give me the structure. Used infrared and carbon 13 nanomards. I just found the two copper in the cassie. So, how does it work? Well, the only are the uh, for the carbon silic acid, both would have a broad peak, uh, and if you check out your data sheets, it's between two thousand five hundred and three thousand three hundred wave numbers. Um, and that would be for OH. For this boy, CH33COOH, I would actually see for that um, three peaks, if I get the formula right, um, because if I draw him out, Hopefully you can see that's one, that's two, and then all these three, those three, the CH3 groups are in the same um, environment. For the other carboxylic acid group uh, compound, you've got that structure there. So that means you see one, two, three, four peaks. So uh, four peaks for him, and we said three peaks for him. Okay, so I've now got the proton NMR, and I need to work out uh, which ester I think this is. Uh, one of the esters, which we've shown below, uh, identify the ester. Okay, so I have got here, this peak is going to be for a hydrogen attached to carbon attached to oxygen. This guy here is a multiple, and if you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven line pattern, is going to be, if you check out your chemical shifts, uh, is going to be for that hydrogen there. And then we've got a doublet here, which is going to be uh, just for a uh, bog standard CH group, like so. So, uh, what's it? Well, if I've got a seven line pattern there, that would suggest to me that coming off this carbon here, I must have two CH3 groups to get that to work. I know that's then followed by a carbon double bond oxygen. Then I've got that because it's an ester group, and then I must have that CH3 group. And you can see that's a singular. So it matches up because there ain't any neighbours for this guy here. So, summary. This peak is split into a doubler because of that one neighbouring hydrogen. That peak is split into a, a seven line pattern multiple because it's split by six hydrogens. And this is a singular because he doesn't have any neighbours. Oh, right, okay, so aspirin paracetamol, give me the structures. Can be paired, aspirin and paracetamol can both be paired using ethanol can hydride, and they give me some uh, examples here. Uh, you would have seen reaction one before, uh, probably reaction two, reaction, uh, sorry, reaction three, reaction two, maybe you. Um, draw the structural compound of the ethanol can hydride form aspirin. So, um, hopefully, you can see that's your ester group there. Isn't it? So you're going to break it there. So um, that's going to be the phenol group there. So your anhydrite is going to be that one there. So you need just one R group coming off of there. Um, oh, right, okay, so they give me uh, the uh, structures of aspirin and paracetamol up here, and they want me to draw the structural compound that reacts with ethanol and to form aspirin. That's your ester bond there, so 
the compound is going to be that one, so it would be that phenol group that would react with ethanoic anhydride as it does here um, to give me aspirin. Uh, right, okay, ethanoic anhydride can react with 4 amino phenol to produce paracetamol. Write an equation for that. Um, so ethanoic anhydride, what is the structural formula? Uh, CH3CO twice. Um, um, for your ethanoic anhydride um, plus uh, and that's going to be your 4 amino phenol is going to produce your paracetamol um, now paracetamol I think it would be quite tough for you to draw in structural formula Benzene ring, uh, like so, and it's also if you kick back, it's going to produce CH three COOH. It's also going to produce ethanoic acid as well. Uh, it then tells you this impurity is formed. If you check out this boy, he's got a phenol group there, and as we just looked at in the previous question, a phenol group can react with ethanoic anhydride to form the ester like so. Uh, right, okay, so then a couple of things. Why is it necessary for pharmaceutical companies to ensure drugs and medicines do? Uh, it's to make sure there's no harmful side effects, um, which you may get um, uh, if you take drugs which haven't been tested properly. Name the functional groups present in aspirin and paracetamol. Uh, let's go back to the structures. So aspirin, kind of hard to do it now, but obviously um, aspirin has got an ester group and a carboxylic acid there, ester carboxylic acid. Uh, paracetamol has got an amide group and a phenol group. Okay, uh, so we're now going back, giving us um, aspirin and paracetamol again. And it wants me uh, to draw uh, a, a reagent A will react with aspirin and with paracetamol, B only with aspirin, C only with paracetamol. So A will react with aspirin and paracetamol. Okay, uh, if you choose sodium, it's going to kick that hydrogen off there and that hydrogen off there. So with aspirin, and it won't affect anything else. Uh, you could use sodium hydroxide, of course. The trouble with sodium hydroxide is it would it would hydrolyze uh, the ester group as well, which could cause um, you difficulties. You're just making it a little bit more complicated for yourself, and it would also hydrolyze the amide group as well. Uh, so those are your two structures with sodium. Um, so reagent A would be sodium. Uh, right, it now carries on. I'm going to leave the structures up so we can see uh, what will actually happen. Reagent B only reacts with aspirin. Um, you've got a carboxylic acid, so again, I, I, I go for that one. Um, and then I would probably use uh, sodium carbonate. Um, and it actually gives you really cool. It gives you uh, the same product as before, um, so no surprise there. Um, something that just reacts with paracetamol is going to be bromine, because you've got your phenol group like so. So something that's only going to react. It doesn't really matter where you put your, your bromines. However, it was phenol to go to two, four and a six position. Don't break that one, um, so just put it in those two positions.